I'm with Leo Igwe uh, and we're at the 11th Beyond Humanism conference uh, in Lille. Uh, my first question for you is why are you taking part in this meeting? Well, I'm taking part in this meeting because um, the meeting, the topic of critical transhumanism and uh, posthumanism is important to my region and it is important also to bring a perspective that captures the context and situations of uh, Africa and Africans to this event. Just like people are coming from Japan, coming from South Korea, coming from Europe, coming from the United States, and trying to contribute to the debate, it is important that we also bring a perspective from the African region you know, to this event. Sure. So you're from uh, Nigeria uh, and you're an African intellectual. Mm -hmm. um, do you think this gives you uh, a specific view on transhumanism and posthumanism? Yes, yes, yes. Because what happens is that um, transhumanism is just a general idea. But in an event like this, it is important to look at how they connect to different contexts. Mm -hmm. So for me, my role here is to bring a view of transhumanism that connects to the African context. Because, look, we might be talking about cloning, or uh, uh, talking about gene engineering, stem cell therapies, and a lot of people here take it for granted, mm. yes? But that's not the same case mm. where I'm coming from. So it is important to ask, how does the situation in different African countries relate to the transhumanist ideals? Or how does um, the uh, transhumanism relate to Africans who are living in different contexts and different situations? So for me, this is a very important um, issue that should be articulated at an event like this. Okay, so can you answer these questions? How do they relate to the well, African context? Well, I mean, contest? I mean, it's a, it's a million dollar question, as I say, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to give it, I'm going to uh, try, in the sense that, um, like today, we, I said, we have, uh, we're talking about cloning human beings, we're talking about stem cell therapies, we're talking about gene engineering, genetic modification, and we're, we're looking at how they are presenting us with solutions to problems, uh, solutions, cures to diseases. Uh, it is important to also think about the fact that these processes are not cheap, they're expensive, and that there are continents or there are places in the world where people don't even have access to the basic medical technologies, not to talk of the emerging technology. And that we should ask ourselves, how do we make sure that emerging technology also speaks to the situation in these places? So let it not be emerging technology only for the rich, the powerful countries, only for the West. Let it be for the world. So I am looking at uh, transhumanism as a global movement, not as a Western movement. Mm -hmm. Because the ideas of transhumanism should speak should relate to the situation in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, and America. Otherwise, you see, it is narrow. It is not global. Yes. So, so this is what I find. This is the way I can relate to it. So it is important for us to start asking ourselves, um, how do we also make cloning, gene modification, stem cell therapy, part of the material conditions for Africans, so that they can also access this and ask themselves, how do we make it part and parcel of some of the facilities that they use to address their everyday problems? So that is how, that is my own perspective and that's what I want to bring to the conference. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in f Africa isn't really impacted by those ideas yet? Yes, it, it? it has not had the kind of impact it has had, let's say, here in Europe. Mm -hmm. if, if, for instance, Recently, there was a woman that said she had um, children who are SS. Um, I don't know how they call it, sickle cell. When they are born, these children, when they are born, after some time, they die, you know, because of their own blood mm -hmm. condition. Now, she had to take the children to the United States for stem cell therapy, and they changed their blood now from SS to AA, and the mm -hmm. children are alive today. 
Now, I want to tell you that there are very few Africans who can afford mm. that kind of procedure. Yeah, sure. And we should not leave emerging technology only for the tiny, rich Africans. We have to make emerging technology available and accessible just like we have the cell phones, just like we have the internet. So many Africans read about emerging technology, but they cannot access it. So it is important we ask ourselves, in a situation where they read about it, they hear about it, but they cannot access it, then there is need for us to look at the reason for that and address those reasons so that Africans can also talk about emerging technology just like Europeans and Americans do. Yes, so th this, is, this is how I'm looking at it, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so what is at stake for Africa? It's the development of the countries and for health? Yeah, health so many things are at stake. Um, first of all, um, emerging, technology, emerging technologies should be produced and made available in a way that African countries and Africa can access it mm -hmm. just like other people in other parts of the world. It is not yet the case. Mm -hmm. We still have emerging technologies only available only for the rich in Africa, only for a very tiny segment. Mm -hmm. So there's a problem of access. There's also the problem of educational systems. Some of the schools also do not have research, library, uh, facilities, whereby some of these discussions, some of these research or these experimentations could be taking place. Because if they are not participating in the research, in the projects, in the production of the emerging technologies, it will be difficult for that to be easily accessible and available. And it will be difficult for Africans to take part in the debate. Because you cannot be taking part in the debate over something you are reading on the internet. You are watching on CNN and Radio France and uh, or, or you are listening uh, on, on the radio. You have to have facilities, research laboratories available there where this thing is going on and where you can really connect them to your problems. Number three, the, another factor that has to do with ideology and religion. It is, it is, very, it is very critical that and uh, emerging technology, transhumanism and post-humanist ideas are going to get a backlash or pushback from religious extremists who might think that they are Western ideas, they are using to command corrupt people, or they are going to conflict with their own religious beliefs. So, but what happens is that, I mean, after all, there are religious people in Europe and in America, and there are religious people living in the Middle East, where a lot of emerging technological projects are taking place. So Africa needs to make that transition into building a religion or having a religion that is receptive mm -hmm. of emerging technological projects and not hostile to those projects and ideas. Okay, well thank you very much for answering my questions. Yeah.